guys, hey guys, hey guys, this is Vaughn, welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beef! I'm back in my little tin can, you may notice I've got some waypoints happening, and I discovered something interesting today that I wanted to show you guys. I went out today uh, to get some orange dye, because you can never have enough orange dye, and there it, I was going to start working on the first of my towers. I've mentioned that I'm going to have five towers on each corner, or each point of my pentagon and I was gonna start working on it and I want there to be lots of orange inverted orange these lights I wanted lots of these and in order to have lots of these you need lots of these out this this update where these things hurt not happy about that dangerous I've got them lining my walkway it's gonna have to change but anyway I went out looking for orange well not necessarily orange but for orange red or yellow flowers so that I could get lots of orange dye and it was my belief that in some direction that I went, I can't remember now which direction it was, but in the direction that I went, uh, that there was a desert biome. And I was pretty sure that the desert uh, led to... Well, I just remember the last time I was in the desert, there was a lot of flowers in the desert, which is kind of weird, but I do remember that there were a lot of flowers in the desert. And so I thought I would... I think I'm pretty sure it went this direction. I wrote the I wrote the coordinates down. I'm pretty sure it went this direction. I thought there was a, a desert in that direction, so I decided to go in that direction and gather flowers along the way until I got to the desert and then, you know, spend a couple days gathering flowers. And to my surprise, well, I did not find the desert. I guess it's a different direction. I think it's that direction now that I think about it. But since I was already way out there, I decided to do a little exploring, and I found some cool stuff. And one of the things that I've been looking for for a long time... Oh, I probably should have showed it before I left, but I got some... It's, uh... I think it's called red... Yeah, this stuff. It's red rock, and I've never found any of it in-game before. And it's kind of a nice orange color. So I was really looking forward to, like, trying to find some. And I found an ice biome and at the edge of the ice biome was a wasteland and at the edge of the wasteland there was a mountain with little tiny bits of uh, red rock on the top of it so I was very excited about that and I spent like an hour I think capturing all of the the red rock off of that off of that mountain top and I was really excited about it and decided to do a little bit more exploring and I think I'm heading in the direction that I'm I'm headed I think I'm headed in the direction that I'm headed. But anyway, I am going to travel over there. It's at like negative 28,000 and we're at 800. So I've got to travel about 2,000 blocks. And I want to show you something really amazing uh, that I found. You guys probably will not think it's that amazing. But to me, it's phenomenal. It's It changes everything to me. So I'm going to grab this iron and I will meet you guys over there. And ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Here is the moment that I've been waiting to show you. Check this out. Now, the train generation is unfortunate, but look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. I, I didn't know that there were, like, biomes like this. I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I thought that there was just, like mountain peaks where you would get some red rock i didn't know that you could like find entire huge biomes that were like this i mean it's just so amazing and then there's like this little river that cuts through here where it rains just in the river look at this it just goes forever and uh of course i'm flying towards the waypoint that i put down <clears throat> and you'll see why i put the waypoint down there I was just amazed as I was coming through here. I was just... It's... I, I love all of the, these biomes. These I'm sorry for my squeaky chair, by the way. I love all of these biomes. Like, It adds so much. It really does. I wish that my regular vanilla Minecraft would add some more biomes because exploration is so much fun. And this adds so much. I mean, just look at that. It just looks awesome. I've never seen one of these biomes in somebody's village in somebody's videos before and anyways yes i just said village so as i was exploring this really cool area i found this there's a village inside of this biome i was so happy when i saw it and it's like the cutest little village like most villages are like super derpy and broken 
in FTV, but this one is like almost perfect. Like that house right there is up on like a stupid little cobblestone pillar. But other than that, other than that, like it's like the best little village ever. And it's like enclosed mostly on all of these sides. It's got, it's like secluded almost. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. Oh my God. Look at it. It's like orange. It's like, And so, I, I had no... Oh, I think my jetpack just ran out. Yep. I had no idea that this sort of place existed. If I had known this sort of place existed, I probably would have tried to find a place like this before I settled down, because... I this Look at the color of this. It's called red rock, but that is orange. And so what I've done is... I put my waypoint down, and I got a bunch of... The one problem with this area is that there's no trees anywhere. I mean, obviously I could go, there's a, a snow biome not that far that way, and it, there's lots of biomes and things, so it's not impossible. You can easily import trees, but that's the one problem. So what I did is I went back, and I got, I filled up my little, uh, two little canvas bags, and look what I brought with me. <laughs> Oops. So, my goal now is to plant all 35 of these in and about this area and I am going to have the most amazing freaking fantastic orange house of doom and amazingness and it doesn't rain in here so you don't get like the ugly uh like in a, a desert biome <clears throat> it doesn't rain in desert biomes either Technically, I don't think this is a desert biome. Where is this? Mountain Ridge. So it's not even called like a red rock anything. It's just has red rocks. It's amazing. Basically, it's amazing. So uh, sun is setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant these. I've cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I lit it up just to kind of keep the villagers safe. But not... Ooh, cave. Hello. Hello. I haven't done a caving episode ever. If any of you guys are new... And you've wanted to watch me before. I have never, ever done a caving episode. Someday, maybe I will. But that day is not today. Today, we are Johnny Appleseed tree planting all of the things. I did lock a couple of the villagers up just so that they would be safe. Yep, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to plant all of these trees. Probably do a little more lighting up and get situated. I brought some chests and some uh, supplies to kind of situate myself here I don't I don't know it's hard to say like <clears throat> I spent all that time working on that dang pentagon and I would like to work on that and finish it but I have to admit I wish that I had built it here because I really like this biome and I'm really sad that I'm gonna be torn between the two so I brought some uh, some obsidian so that I can make a portal and connect this to the nether hub. And I'm kind of regretting now that I gave my portal gun away to Caleb. So I might look into employing someone to help me kill a wither so that I can recreate another another uh, portal gun. That way I could just easily uh, link a portal to this area and I could, you know, just very quickly pop back and forth. And I think that's probably the the best, uh, hello, Mr. Creeper, it's probably the best idea possible. So anyway, I, like I said, I'm going to be right back for you. I'm going to spend the night and plant trees. So see you guys in a minute. I just, I can't even, it just, it's so big and it just keeps going and it's so pretty. I've planted all of the trees. Oh my God. Is that another village over there? I can't even handle it. Like, I, I put all, most of my stuff down. I really like the way that this looks with the green in the center. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> planted a couple trees. I bone mailed them as I went. Ooh, this looks cool. Uh, it's unfortunate that some of the terrain generation is a little messed up. But, oh, man, I'm so in love with this area. It sounds so retarded, but I really do love it. I think this is a completely different village. That's how big this biome is. This biome is so enormous. I was talking to Olmok earlier, and he was like, I've never seen a biome like that before. 
or at least that's the impression that I got. He was like, I really want to come see it. So, yeah, this one's got, oh my god, look at this. Holy cow, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Dude, that is awesome. I don't know if that pillar is somebody visiting or what. Oh my god, this is awesome. Let's see, if somebody's been here before or not, there would be nothing in here. <laughs> yeah, somebody's obviously been here before. Whoever it was, I am jealous. Not that I necessarily cared about the stuff that was in that chest, just how cool this area is. But it's mine now! You left, you can't have it anymore. Dude, you are in a lighting glitch? There you go, have a torch. Oh man, I love this area. I could definitely live somewhere around here. Oh, well, there's usually chests in this thing, isn't there? <laughs> if nothing else, I want to get the the circle stones. Yeah, there's a chest right there. Boop. Oh yeah, you didn't get whatever was in here, f sucker. Not that I really need skeleton heads or eggs. I got a bunch of eggs before I came over here, actually. Gotta grab these. Oh man, I'm so excited. Of course, like... I want to work on the on this the Pentagon too, but I just like this area so much. I feel like it's so me. And I know that there's even like some talk about like restructuring the way that the server is being run and that might even can, can have a uh, potential for a map reset, which I could handle. But <laughs> Now that I have found this amazing biome, I don't want to change it. Oh, man, it looks so cool. I love the way that the village is, like, half up there and half down here. It's kind of, like, annoying with regards to... Oh, hello, skeleton. It's kind of annoying with regards to, uh... Actually, like, making your villagers live, but... I love it in terms of the way that it looks. It just looks really cool. And these, like, cliff areas. This looks so cool. Like, you could put all sorts of neat stuff under here. Like skeletons. <laughs> I know that they're up on... Oh, man. I know that they're on the mini-map, but... I don't tend to notice them. And I'm not very well armored, which is why they were kicking my butt. Oh, man, I don't even know where to go from here. I just, I don't explore enough in Minecraft, and I really should. So where is the, uh, there was a little area, yes, yeah, so that's the area that had that little greenery. Look at how big this is. Like, I've, I could show you the entire biome. I could just fly around and show you the entire edges of it, and it would, it would, it would fill up the rest of the episode, basically. I could just sit here and talk about Minecraft and, and PAX East, which I got back from. And if you guys haven't watched my uh, vanilla server series, whatever, then you're missing out, because that's where I talked about it. I could talk about it here, but it's kind of weird to, like, break it up between two series. See, that kind of built... That, that rock right there, that's kind of what I found earlier, where it was just one, just like that, where it, just the top of it was red. It was even less than that. I, yeah, I did not know that there was an entire world of this, is that a pumpkin? What is that? Oh, that's a beehive, isn't it? No? It's just a red rock. Hello, solitary red rock over here. Hello, cow. Hello, chunk divide. Hello, pool of lava and driblet of water. But yeah, I had an amazing time at PAX, and you should go watch my vanilla episode uh, if you're interested in hearing some stories about that. Or, look at this guy. Why aren't you burning? Seriously? Why are you not on fire? There you go. I guess you forgot how to burn. Uh, and, uh... Oh, man. I just keep being amazed by how awesome this looks. <laughs> Is that retarded? I don't know. I'm just... Like, the, the it's so cool, and there's so many neat areas. I wouldn't know if I wanted to live here. I wouldn't know where I would want to live, like, would I want to live where I could build, like, a house right here and, and have, like, the green as well as the orange, or would I want to live, like, in the center where you wouldn't see anything but orange everywhere that you went, oh my god, 
Yeah, we're just gonna fly around and I'm going to show you how amazing this biome is and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about PAX because it was amazing and I know that I get more views on my FTB series so and of course I want to explore this too. I really do need to explore more in Minecraft because there are a lot of really cool biomes in FTB that I have not ever seen and if any more of them are this amazing look at how cool that like rounded top of that mountain is oh man and I met a lot of cool FTB people, speaking of which, at PAX. Um, <clears throat> Direwolf20 was there, Floristar, a lot of people whose, like, handles I don't know, but I know by their names, like Lex, who I think is the Forge creator, Forge mod creator. He was really cool. Uh, lots of neat people. I met some fans of them. There's one guy named Rich who is going to work on making an ocean mod, hopefully will end up being really awesome. And I told him I would I would play test it if he ever does it. Oh, look at how this is so cool. Like it sticks out like a little peninsula. And it's so orange, I love it. And I'm not like the biggest FDB person in the world, but meeting those people was really cool. Just to, I don't know, there's just, I, I genuinely believe you can form amazing friendships online. I really do. I think that that is a perfectly valid and good way to make friends. But there's just something to be said about meeting people in person and hanging out and just having a drink with them at the bar or something that you can't replicate online. Oh, gosh. That guy will murder my, murderize me. So you can, you can definitely make friends and... Oh, this is uh, such a cool little area. Like a little valley. Uh, you can definitely make friends online and good friends and, and friends for life without ever meeting someone. But it takes a lot longer. I'm looking to see if I have any... Um, I know I have some coal somewhere. I just want to make some more torches. Yeah. But it you can get through that friendship a lot faster. Do I have any wood on me? I think I might have put all the wood in the chest. I may have already... No, no. I got some wood on me. Good. So, you know... It, it might take you a year to to make a friendship with someone that you've met online to get to like the level that you can get almost like over in a weekend and and it's it's so weird to say that because i do feel like online friendships are very genuine but there's just something to be said about meeting in person and hanging out and just really being able to connect with someone and i got to meet and hang out with a lot of really cool people uh, not only new people, but, uh, old people too, you know, like Good and Paws. I had met them both at, uh, <clears throat> Minecon in Paris, and we'd hung out again in London, and I really do feel like that we'd become friends during that time, but, you know, you further, we've, we've talked, like, online since then, and then we met again at PAX, and it really felt like seeing my old friends again. And that was the highlight of PAX for me, was hanging out with my friends again. Like, the convention was great and all, but I told Good at one point, I said, what I really want to do is just rent a house somewhere, like a big giant house, and just fill it with, like, amazing food and alcohol and, like, super comfy couches and just have everybody sit around and talk and just hang out. And he was like, what you're describing is Play on Con. <laughs> so... I don't know how I'm going to manage to afford Play On Con, but I am going to go to Play On Con. I've already bought the ticket to go to Play On Con. I, I still have to figure out who and where I'm rooming, but I will figure it out. I will figure that out because if that's what Play On Con is, then I need to go. And, you know, I've made friends. I, I, I wouldn't say that I made friends with, but I met the guys from the pod, the Shaft podcast, Eric and Brent. We went bowling together and karaoke together and drinking together and they were really cool and they're really in in the involved in play on con or it's their con and i would really like to have a chance to get to hang out with them a little bit more i would like to really get a chance to hang out with everyone more without the burden of like huge convention hanging over us like mine con was much smaller than pax but it was Minecraft-centric, so people were very much uh, monopolizing and interested in the guys, which is fine and amazing, and that's pretty much why they go to these conventions to meet the fans. But it was exhausting, you know, just 
constantly on performing kind of for the the fans and it was paris and we didn't speak the language and it was expensive and so on and so forth and then pax which was in america which was awesome but is so big we spent probably half of our time at least traveling to and from locations looking for people trying to meet up trying to coordinate like events and it worked out and i had an amazing time don't get me wrong that looks weird as heck but it would be really cool to have a small con where it's mostly friends just hanging out without like the burden of like thousands and thousands of people and crowds and and just trying to i don't know Ooh, look at this guy this is obviously the way that somebody came get out of my land this is my red rock now i don't know what that accent was somebody without a jetpack apparently had to come up here and explore that's the thing about living on a server is you never know who these people are they don't leave signs i like leaving signs like if i had found that village and planned to leave i probably would have said this village was discovered by vaughn on march 31st 2013 or something and i've i love it, this amber stuff and Olmok gave me a silk touch pick and I have been grabbing it whenever I see it so that someday, when I have a fortune pick, I can fortune the heck out of this amber and get even more. You can see how enormous this biome is. Look at this. This is so cool. Yeah, I yeah, I love it. I'm probably going to go to PAX Prime. A lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to go to PAX Prime. That's in Seattle, Washington, probably at the end of August or very early September. I think Good and Paws are planning to go, and assuming that they're not sick of me, and they're probably not, uh, I, th I think I think I can trust that they like me now and aren't just humoring me. Uh, I will probably go with them. Uh, I don't think I'll room with them, but I think I'll probably do kind of like what I did at PAX, where I just kind of follow them around and get to be like their camera guy and their bag guy and their handler or whatever they need. And, and then just drinking buddy and friend and stuff. It's weird to me that, like, here the terrain looks nice and it flows perfectly, whereas, like, here it doesn't. It's like... I know Olmok was trying to explain to me why this happened. It was something that he did, but... This is so ugly! And this looks so amazing, and I don't know why... Why you do this, Minecraft. Why you have such weird terrain generation. Whew! I, I have so many crazy stories, too, like... We went bowling with Captain Sparkles. What the heck? That's crazy. I met him. I didn't meet him at Minecon, but like he was at Minecon, and you couldn't get near the guy because he was just always constantly swarmed with like millions of fans. I knew that he was popular. I did not know that he was that popular, but he was like such a cool, down to earth guy. Not that I want to like say I, nobody that I met was not cool or down to earth, but some people were definitely more willing to like hang out with us. And he was definitely just like, hey, let's go bowling. Did not expect him to like be one of the people that ended up, ended up going bowling with us. But it was totally awesome that he, he was. And I wish that he wasn't as famous as he is because you come into like some of these situations where like you meet these really cool people. And even this is true of like Good and Paws and stuff. Like they're, they're so, I wouldn't say that necessarily that they're famous, but they're so busy and people monopolize their time so much that, like, it's it's difficult to get a hold of them. Like, for instance, while we were at the event, a lot of people wanted to contact Good or Paws to say, Hey, is there going to be a meetup? Can we see you? Can we talk to you? Whatever. And But they couldn't get a hold of Good because, you know, if you tweet to Good... It gets just lost in the sea of all the thousands of people who are tweeting him. So people were contacting me because I was pretty much always with the guys and I don't have <clears throat> nearly as many people who tweet to comment or to comment at me. So I was able to kind of organize that stuff. But like Jordan, for instance, like he was really cool. I enjoyed hanging out with him at bowling. But like there's just no way that I could ever contact him again and be like, hey, I was the guy that you bowled with. Let's be friends. And even if I could, like, even if he had given me, like, his text or something, or his personal Twitter or something, you run into, like, as a, as a Let's Player, like, you run into this 
this fear that they are going to assume that you only want to hang out with them because they're famous so that you can get fame from them. And I know that that's a, a fear that I've got my own self. I've had people definitely, uh, for instance, on this server, if I'm online and certain members are on, this looks cool too, uh, they might stalk me while I'm playing just because they want to be featured on a video. Or, you know, they want to, you know, for a long time I was trying to find people to co-op with and nobody was interested. And suddenly I've got 1,800 subs and people suddenly want to co-op with me. Which is cool, I get it, but at the same time I'm kind of like, mm, where were you when I was asking before, you know? And so I know that that's an issue that he has, that's an issue that Good and Paws have. I, you know, I... Sometimes I wish that I didn't Let's Play at all, just so that I could definitely assure these people that... Well, no, I guess that wouldn't even still be an assurance, because people still might want to hang out with someone just because they're famous, even if it's not going to, like, benefit their channel. So I don't know. I get, and really, I know that I'm, I'm working too much about it. We, Good and I had a conversation at one point, uh, late Sunday night, I think it was, where I was like, I don't want you to ever think that... I'm only hanging out with you guys for what for what you guys can do for me or whatever. And and fortunately, like he was like, No, I, I know that that's not the case with you, but I still it worries me sometimes just because I know so many people do and I've been in that situation and it sucks to kind of be used for your fame versus as, it's not the kind of guy I am. Like sometimes it's business and that's cool, you know, like even business, like, for instance, like, the Runes of the Minecracker thing. Sure, that's business. That was something that I wanted to do as a, to help grow my channel. There's no doubt about that. I wanted to do a co-op, a CTM, with people like Brian and, and Zuljin because it would help us cross-pollinate our subs, and it's good for the channel. It gives you some reliable content, funny stuff. It's great to co-op with people who are funny and professional but, you know, still good people. But at the same time, like, I like both of those guys. You know, it, it, I've watched Brian for a long time. I've enjoyed his stuff. He's one of those people like Good where I feel like we were friends before we started uh, co-oping and we just never had the chance to really be, be friends because I can't believe how big this biome is, by the way. Uh, because, you know, we're... Because he's you know got enough subs it's just not something that you can just easily contact him and say hey let's go for a beer or whatever <clears throat> so even within business regards you know i i wanted it to be more friends and i would rather have friends than than subs not not to say that i don't want subs but i just it i i am not a, a business oriented guy like I'm never going to be Sky Does Minecraft because that guy found the formula and knows how to do it and he milks it. And I can't do that. Like, I'm just more of a let's play and have fun. Oh, look, there's a volcano right here. Can you guys believe how big this biome is? I was going to, I mean, I'm already at 20 minutes and that's after I stopped recording uh, to to show you. Like, the first half of this, is, that doesn't include the first half of this. So I probably need to wrap this up. But I really wanted to, like, walk the perimeter of this biome and kind of get the lay of the land, see what biomes I'm up against. And and I thought I would circle around and end up back at the freaking village, but I don't know where that dang village is now. I guess I could turn the, uh, I turned the waypoints off, so I, I need to turn it back on so that I can figure out how to get back. But can you believe this? I love this. This, this... That's awesome. I don't know that I could ever build anything down there because of the it's so narrow and like cliffy and stuff, but oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. I, I don't know what I'm going to build here. I want to build something so bad, though. I want to build... Oh, oh, oh. I want to build something amazing. And my poor jetpack is probably half dead, isn't it? Yep, it's almost dead. All right. Well, we are going to get up here and we're going to walk. And... I'm gonna eat this piece of steak. And I guess we can, uh, let's see, how do you turn these maps back on? Is it escape? Nope. 
Nope. Yep. Waypoints. Back on. Done. Back to game. Oh, man. There it is. That way. Wow. It's that way. It's crazy. Anyway, I've just rambled on and on, and I didn't even really talk about packs at all. I just talked about, like, life and stuff. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you are enjoying this crazy red rock area as much as I am. If you have any suggestions as to what I should build here, definitely let me know. Um, definitely check out my packs uh, review f on my vanilla server, and I'm doing, like, a contest giveaway there. So if you guys are interested in winning a Minecraft decal for your car, your cell phone, your computer or something, check that out because that is happening over there. And let me know if you guys are going to, uh, to PAX, Prime, or Play on Con, or any other conventions or stuff, because I would love to know who's going where, and I know most of you guys are going to go to meet the Minecraft guys, but I really hope that some of you might uh, go to say hi to me too, because I love conventions, I love meeting people, and I've been having a blast. People have been actually been asking for my autograph, and that's just phenomenal to me. I really love it, and you just come back from these conventions, you just want to hang out. And I mean, that goes back to the thing that I was saying too, like I really had such good conversations with Good and Paws, and I can tweet them, and they'll talk to me, but like you can't just... Like, I just want to go and, like, hang out with them every weekend and, and have a beer and, like, continue some of, like, the deep discussions that we had. And, and it's just really hard to do that when when they're so difficult to contact and when they're so busy because I know that they're always working, you know. And so I've, even if I contacted them on Skype, I'll feel like I'm uh, aggravating them and, and distracting them from the work that they should be doing or sleeping or spending time with their their spouses or in Good's case, his child, or whatever. <sighs> so, it's it's difficult. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play here for a little while. I love this area. I really do. Look at it with the trees and everything. Ah, it's so pretty! You know, I'm, orange is not even my favorite color. A lot of people think it is, but it is not. I just really like it. It's not my favorite color, though. It just looks amazing. This place needs next is pumpkins. Yep, it needs some pumpkins. But for now, I think we're going to call it good. Uh, thank you guys, as always, for watching. I'm sorry if this is a little long and crazy. I just, oh my god, orange. Yay. See you guys next time.